Hey everyone, it is Danny, and welcome to this another hurricane season countdown video. And so I hope that you're all having a really great day thus far. And so in this video, we'll be taking a look at what is currently happening across the tropics. Of course, we're going to be looking at that Enso region as well. And uh, overall, uh, what is anticipated as you're going to be progressing into the next couple of days. And so before I go into details, please do subscribe if you haven't done so already and tap the notification bell so that you never miss an important update all right and so we are now 74 days away from the official start of the 2023 atlantic hurricane season and of course as time goes by as we progress to the summer months uh, we're gonna have the northern hemisphere uh increasing in temperature of course and that is going to be the sole reason we have tropical cyclone activity because they depend on heat and moisture along with all the other uh conducive conditions to allow for development but in terms of what is currently happening, uh, we're taking a look at what is going on for the Caribbean and we can see that uh, there is quite a bit of shower and thunderstorm activity uh, in the northwestern Caribbean right now. Now that is impacting areas such as the Yucatan, Cuba and just off Belize, north of Honduras there we can see that convective activity moving into, uh, into Honduras and then in the vicinity of Jamaica there is some cloud right now but as we drift more to the east we can see that we have some activity moving into the region now this is all likely going to be resulting in overcast conditions with possibly brief showers across the eastern caribbean islands but we can see that there are no major spots of convection we're not seeing that pop of color over that side of the basin right now and so what is expected as we're going to be progressing into the next couple of days so let's go ahead and take a look at it starting out with the precipitation that is anticipated so looking at the gfs model here we can see that uh between now and tomorrow this is the amount of rainfall expected now we see that majority of this is for the northwestern caribbean so we see that the highest totals are likely to be in the vicinity of the bahamas and over into uh cuba and central america where we're seeing that blue shade kind of lightning that is where we have an increase in an increased total of rainfall along with that lilac shade that indicates the minimum of two inches of accumulated precipitation between now and tomorrow morning so for other areas such as jamaica minimal rainfall between now and then and we don't see much for the northeastern caribbean which includes hispaniola as well as puerto rico the virgin islands parts of the leeward and windward islands and down to the abc islands that region is quite dry so uh, if you're there it's unlikely that you'll be receiving uh, much rainfall and then over into Trinidad and Tobago similar story not much rainfall activity anticipated for you guys now as we progress into tuesday between monday and tuesday we can see here that as a result of that front we're gonna have that continuous rainfall across the northwestern caribbean so of course uh, northern central america cuba uh the bahamas of course and even in the vicinity of the cayman islands again not much rainfall activity expected for jamaica but as we're going to be progressing into uh, between tuesday and Wednesday there is going to be that activity sort of clearing up and then eventually as we head between Thursday and Friday we can see here that a lot of this is going to be moving out so after the passage of this second front there is going to be that dry pattern kind of returning for the region maybe still some occasional showers from the remnants but nothing too intense anticipated after that time now along with the rainfall for especially the northwestern Caribbean and there is going to be that temperature drop so if you're not too familiar with this map here where we have the cooler colors those shades of blue uh go into that purple shade that is indicating below normal temperature meanwhile the warmer colors yellows oranges reds indicate above normal temperature the white means that things are pretty much average within the area so head into tomorrow there we have the time up there for tomorrow we can see that uh there's that massive cold air that is dipping into the uh uh, Gulf of Mexico and into parts of the northwestern Caribbean. We see Mexico and also western Cuba being affected by this at that time. And now heading to Tuesday, we see a lot of uh, 
cooler than normal temperatures for especially parts of Central America. We see uh, Mexico, Guatemala, Belize, Honduras. So those areas along with Cuba, parts of the southern U.S., of course, and the northwestern Bahamas are likely going to be feeling those below normal temperatures. But of course, as we progress into the middle of this week, temperatures are likely going to be returning to normal. So that is what is expected as we progress into the next couple of days in terms of the cold front. And so now let's go ahead and take a look at the sea surface temperatures. And here we are seeing it that uh, things are very slowly warming up. So let's go to 14 days prior to now. So this was on the 5th of March. And uh, we can see that there is a definite warm up. We can see that difference in the sea surface temperature. Saying to that, time compared to what we have now so this is going to be the general trend as we progress to the start of the hurricane season as i said eventually uh, we're going to be heading into the season of summer which is of course when we're receiving more direct rays of the sun and when the northern hemisphere is tilted toward it over in the eastern pacific we can see that the temperatures are on a roll uh 28 29 degrees celsius isotherm over into the area and also for off the coast of Africa uh, we can see that as well but for the tropical Atlantic and the Caribbean it's really mainly the maximum of around 27 degrees Celsius but as I said this is going to be the continuous trend where we see that warming up across the Atlantic Basin and then looking at the latest value for the Enso region uh, we can see that that is minus 0.151 so it was just at that zero line right there but now we're seeing that the uh, temperature is kind of dipping now this, this isn't a major dip and for the most part it is still in that neutral phase now it is likely to remain in that neutral phase and possibly progress into the El Nino phase which is when the value is above 0.5 so when it crosses that line that is when we enter El Nino conditions and with El Nino conditions the eastern pacific basin is typically more active Meanwhile, the Atlantic Basin usually experiences more suppressed tropical cyclone activity. But of course, anything can change, anything can happen, and we just have to keep watching what's going on out there and see what the eventuality is going to be as the hurricane season approaches. But as of now, there are no new predictions for the Atlantic. There are no predictions in terms of how many named storms, hurricanes, and majors that are expected. But of course, we're going to be seeing more of those as we progress into the next few weeks. And so uh, with these countdown videos each Sunday, I'm going to be keeping you guys updated on all that is expected across the North Atlantic Basin. And so that is pretty much it for this video. I hope that you found it to be quite informative. But if you have any questions, you can leave them down in the comments. And you can also share your thoughts there. And of course, remember to always be with the wise.